open up on eat your lover boy and me that's knock knocking won't you listen to me sugar or the catch her at the high that's not the sort of song they want it's just type of thing i'll try This is the climax, the ultimate justification and the real reward. In the staid, respectable neighbourhood of Kensington, there's a nice upper income bracket block of flats. Inside, a doormat, over which pass some rather flashy feet. The doormat belongs to Mr. Lawrence Morris Parnes, who also owns a batch of golden boys. He creates them and manages them and their money. There's Ron Witcherly, 17, known to his fans as Billy Fury, guaranteed a thousand pounds in his first year. Roy Taylor, 18, alias Vince Eager, 5,000 pounds by his fifth year. John Askew, or Johnny Gentle, 22 from Merseyside. And Duffy Power, real name Raymond Howard, 17. All eager, power, gentle fury in the lucrative business, as someone said, of putting teenage growing pains to music. Teenage growing pains to music? No, I disagree entirely with that. Uh, basically, you mean you're talking about movements associated with rock and roll. I can't agree with you at all. Uh, for example, you can take brilliant conductors who all have a different style of conducting. Uh, there's not a basic way of conducting an orchestra. Uh, all these uh, various conductors are showmen, and when they get before their orchestra, they put a lot of vivid and uh, arm movements into their work. It's just the same as my boys. They put a lot of leg movement into their work. They feel what they're doing, and this is terribly important. Uh, years ago, you had silent movies. Afterwards, talking was added to it. Years ago, you had straight singers. Now you have singers who put a lot of movement and feeling into what they're doing. This is very important to their work. This is not a gimmick. What perplexes a lot of people, I think, is that no training seems to be needed for success in this sphere. I will disagree with you there. Uh, my boys are not untrained. A lot of them, uh, shall we say, are natural and have natural ability, but they do train themselves as they go along. Do you rechristen all your boys? Oh, yes, I think this is terribly important. Um, Otherwise, they, they would go on the stage with peculiar names. It wouldn't be part of their makeup. For example, you might get Fred Bloggs or something like that. Uh, you could never have a rock and roll singer by, by that name. And well, their names are a bit peculiar as it is, aren't they? Pride, Gentle, Fury, Eager. Why do you choose names like that? Well, this means something, you see. Uh, for example, Marty Wilde, as you probably know, his real name was Reg Smith. Uh, he was a big, tall lad of six foot four uh, who had to be kept friendly, yet he had to be kept... Uh, wild, so hence Marty Wild. Marty's very friendly, and Wild shows that little wild trait in him, you see. And the same with Fury. Billy is nice and friendly, and, and Fury is a little bit ferocious, so gives him the mean streak. Is and, it, uh, Johnny Gentle is... is uh, Johnny's a quiet one. <laughs> That's why he's Johnny Gentle. And Vince uh, is always ready to uh, give a very good show, and that's why he's eager. That's Vince eager. And uh, do they, uh, boys living in this house, do they call each other by those names? Oh, yes, they get quite used to it. Uh, and I believe their parents do as well when they see them. I mean, they become who they are on the stage. You look after your boys pretty carefully. Do you regulate their private lives as well? Yes, I do, to a degree. I think this is also very important because uh, indirectly uh, it comes back to their career. Uh, what they do in their private life is uh, really their own business, but at the same time they have to watch their career and one thing can connect with the other, so you have to be very careful. Well, do you make them go to bed at a certain time? I like them to go to bed at a certain time, yes. Um, I like them to be in not later than midnight, if possible. And do you say what they'll wear in their spare time? I like to help them. Uh, I like to make suggestions, put it that way. But we don't, we don't argue on this. We always have mutual talks and usually works out very well. Don't you ever feel that, that uh, you are being manipulated just like a puppet sometimes? As long as they do it right. No, I think it's up to you to go outside and the performance you do, it's, it's all your own, you know. All your own work, what you do on the stage. It all amounts to having faith in your manipulators, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, do people often tell you that your managers are taking you for a ride and making a great deal of money out of you? 
Very often. How long have you been in this singer's school? Well, two weeks with Larry. Do you think it's going to be a bit of an odd life? Well, it'll tie me down a little bit, but it's good for the career, you know. It's the best thing. But coming into it, don't you feel that there are an awful lot of smooth operators about in this business? Do you feel that you can trust them? Well, uh, as long as I do it right out of it, I'm not really worried, you know. But don't you think it'll be a strange life? Well, uh, I don't really mind. It's what I've wanted. And I think, uh, I think I'll buckle down to it. Do you feel that the teenagers that you entertain, you have a good effect on them or a bad effect? What do you think? Well, I don't know, really. I think it all depends. Um, it's only... Any, well, I suppose it's only feeling, you know. They see someone they like and they hear something they like and it just might be a bad effect. It all depends on the teenager, I think. But when they go hysterical and they shout and scream and so on, what, what do you think about that? I love it. What jobs did you do before you became a singer? I was an apprentice joiner for a year and a half and uh, I passed most of my exams but towards the end of that term I dropped off a bit and so what? I decided to take to this and fortunately I met Larry and that was that. As uh, you're only just beginning, do you find that you have quite a lot of spare time? Um, no, not really. I do a lot of rehearsing and try to write a few more songs. You write your own songs, do you? Yes. And then uh, what, what do you do for amusement? Oh, well, take girls. Anything else? Not really, no. Do, do you, I see you read one or two things. Oh, yes, I read a few books. I like reading woodwork books. Get plans for different mm. things, tables or diagrams for models, things like that. Do you think that you've got a good chance of being on the stage still at 45, say? Well, I hope to. I don't know about my chances. Yeah, that's all, Jack. I get the love of any game of that.